This rocking chair has been in my family for about 30 years. Now there's not anything really particularly special about it, it's not vintage or antique, it's just a piece of furniture that we've had for quite a while in the family. But for most of its life, it's been indoors, with a little bit of use, but not really a whole lot. But for about the past five to seven years, I've had it out here on my front porch, which is covered, but it's still exposed to the elements, especially during the summer months when it's exposed to the sun, and during the winter months with moisture in the air and rain. And it's really starting to show its age. Most of the top coat is gone, and there's some visible moisture and water damage. So if I don't do something soon, there's gonna be some really bad damage with the wood splitting and other things to the chair. And I like to prevent that. So I'm gonna take this back to my shop, start stripping it down and redoing the finish. So now that I have the rocking chair in the backyard, I'm gonna start stripping it down. I'm gonna mainly be using some 100 grit sandpaper to sand off as much of the old finish as I can. Any of the parts that are sun damaged are a lot easier to sand down because the top coat's already been worn off. The back side of the chair will take a little bit more work because there's still some of the factory finish left on there. And I'll show you a little bit of that right now. So this right here is what's left of the factory finish. This is the back side of the chair, which means that it wasn't facing the sun, so it didn't really get affected. But I still need to sand it down and remove a lot of it because it's not gonna match up with the new finish that I'm putting on. And as a comparison, you can kind of see the factory finish versus pretty much the bare wood that I've already sanded down right there. It's a nice looking finish, but I don't think I'm gonna be able to replicate it exactly the same way. So I need to kind of sand it back, at least get the top coat off of it, and then kind of go from there. So that's gonna be my biggest pain in getting this back to bare wood. I'm trying to avoid using chemical stripper, and we'll see how well I could do uh, without it, and just go from there. I've been sanding for a while now, and I'm making some pretty good progress. But I wanna show you one quick trick to figure out how to gauge some of your progress when you're sanding. Just take a little bit of mineral oil, put a little bit on a rag, and wipe in an area that you've been sanding. You see any areas that are a little bit splotchy, or a little bit darker, are areas that still have a little bit of stain left in the wood. And you'll be able to see a little bit better of what areas still need to be sanded more, where there's still stain, and if there's any shiny areas where you missed any of the top coat that still has to be removed before you put on any of your final finish. I've done just about as much hand sanding as I can do. I've also used a palm sander to get down almost all the bare wood. But there's still a lot of small crevices that are really hard to get. And it's kind of a situation of diminishing returns with time, for how much time I'm gonna get into those small areas. So I was trying to avoid it, but I don't think I'm gonna be able to. I'm gonna to have to use some chemical stripper. I won't have to use as much to get it all cleaned up. I'm hoping that this will get it to a point where I think it's acceptable so I can start patching it up and then applying a final finish. If you've never used a chemical stripper before, make sure that you read the directions. This stuff is pretty potent and it could be somewhat dangerous in terms of fumes or getting on your skin. So make sure that you have gloves and some eye protection, especially this one because it's a spray on. Um, before you use it. It works really well. Just be careful. Read the directions. All right. So I used a paint stripper and it ended up making a bigger mess than I was hoping and really wasn't that helpful in the long run. Uh, most of the hand sanding that I did was probably the most effective. And then using the palm sander, making quick work of really large areas like the seat and the back. But now I have a little bit of a dilemma because I removed a lot of finish in places where it was down to bare wood, but I couldn't get all the finish off in other areas. I get this really kind of splotchy type of look. And I think everybody has their own threshold of acceptability. And even mine tends to be pretty low. But even with this, I don't think I can quite accept it as it is right now. Now I can spend a lot more time sanding and trying to get it perfect, but I don't think I'm ever gonna get it really perfect. I might get it a little bit better than it is now, but never completely finished. If I was doing this for a client, I'd have to take a different approach, possibly even just take the chair apart and do a full type of uh, cleanup and stripping or, or whatever. I'm not even sure what the entire process would be. I was gonna try to avoid using stain, but I think staining the chair is gonna be the only way to give it, I think staining the chair is gonna be the only way to get it to kind of a, a level point where I'm gonna be happy with it. So I'm gonna test a little bit of stain on one small area and then go from there.
I finished applying all the stain and for the most part it looks pretty good. It is still a little bit splotchy in some areas. I'm trying to clean that up. And here is another quick tip. So if you're working with stain and you feel like it is getting pulled up in too many areas, you can simply use a lot, not a lot, but you can use a little bit of steel wool. And you can come in and use this to kind of dial it back a little bit. You can pull some of the stain off of the surface. You see that here towards the edge, it is really dark from the way the stain kind of soaked in and just kind of the way the grain is on the wood right there. And I can use the steel wool to bring it back. I think steel wool is a better way of going about it as opposed to sandpaper. Um, sandpaper gets gunked up really fast and the steel wool I think just does a better job in pulling some of it off. And another byproduct is the steel wool could also be used to kind of burnish. And almost get kind of a, a shiny coat on the top a little bit first. So, steel wool, stain, and make your projects look just a little bit better. The chair is finally all prepped, sanded, stained, sanding sealer, wiped down with the tack cloth. The finish I'm going to be using is called a spar urethane. This is the stuff that is supposed to be used for outside and it has the best finish properties for being outdoors and UV lighting. Um, that's the way it's supposed to be. A lot of people say that things still just wear down just as much, but I'm going to give it a shot and I guess I'll check back in in about a year to see if it actually held up. But this is the stuff I'm going to use for, for the chair today. Spar urethane is supposed to have a really good moisture resistance and we'll see if that's actually the case. The can suggests three coats with an hour of drying time in between. So I'm actually gonna try to follow the directions for once. And the rocking chair is done. The finish came out really good and it should last out here for quite a while longer. Like I mentioned before, the stain is a little bit darker than I initially intended, but it ended up working out pretty well in the long run. And it fits the decor of my porch here pretty well. Don't forget to subscribe and follow, and go ahead and share the video with anybody else that you think might enjoy this type of uh, furniture restoration type of video. You can find out more information on geekbuilders.net. We have some articles, project plans, and a shop with t-shirts and other merchandise there for you to kind of check out. And we also have a Patreon if you like to help out the channel and if you're in a position to do so. Every little bit helps. So that's it for this one. I'm gonna relax out here in the nice evening breeze and I'll see you in the next video.